Welcome to what is a follow-up tutorial for a video that we made a while back called Game Optimization Tutorials. So originally this video was meant to target the very beginners that are trying to make it to game design. But after reading some of your comments, a lot of you said that I didn't cover the scripting part of the game. So in this tutorial, we're going to try to answer those questions. First of all, I've updated Unity to the latest version, which is 2019.4. Point two, uh, the personal package and now with this update the profiler is working so now we have a somewhat accurate present representation of the performance of our uh, video game for now what we're gonna do is set the resolution to 1920 by 1080 and I'm going to disable vsync also we're gonna make sure that the vsync is disabled into the project settings so do not sync also, I'm not using a render pipeline, so this is just a Unity standard. Everything you see in here is just a Unity standard pipeline. Okay, so what we're going to do now, in our scene we have two vehicles that are AI, and then inside that AI, what we have is an input manager script that is responsible for the AI drive. The way this AI works, it obviously calculates the waypoint distance and then it steers the wheels. But the way it calculates the waypoint distance is by using a for loop. Now, as we know, this for loop is very, very pricey into the CPU side of things. So first thing it does is that it loops the whole entire stack of nodes. Now, if we look into our game, into the waypoints, what we have here is uh, some spheres. And then if we select the parent object, it should tell us the whole entire map. If we look at the number of, sp of spheres we have into this uh, track waypoint, we can see that it's pretty high. It's 120 spheres. What it does is it goes through 120 spheres. And then after that, it uses if statements. Now, if you're building a game that is supposed to be run at mobile devices, you should avoid using if statements as much as possible because those if statements uh, consume a lot of processing power. So after that, it goes another if state into another if statement and then it sets the current node to a set of value. Okay, enough explanation. Now let's go and press play. And obviously, I'm recording the information into the profiler. Okay, let's just hit play. Okay, now we got a reading of what goes on behind all that processing. Now these spikes are the actual editor, the actual Unity updating its engine. So if you can see, it takes in a lot of uh, processing power, but it's just one spike. Now, if you actually build the game, these spikes will not uh, exist. So these are just inside Unity and we should now worry about that. Anyway, what we can see in here, is that obviously the GPU usage is pretty high. Now to to get a accurate uh, representation, you should first look at the performance of your computer. So right now I have a uh, 1050 and a Core i5 with a, a, a base speed of 3.2. Previously, when I built games, I found out that the respectable uh, frame rate that shows in here for mobile use should go down all the way over to 150 to 200 FPS. Now in here what we have is 60 FPS, which is not, not ideal. And obviously the GPU usage can be fixed simply by turning all, off the post-processing. So if we turn off the post-processing, the GPU usage goes down significantly. 
Now the GPU usage can go down even more by obviously setting the quality settings to low. And now the GPU usage is very 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 low. Let's just ignore that. For the GPU usage what we can do is lower it down even more by turning off the reflection probes since I'm using that in my project. And now if I hit play it is as low as it can go. Now if you remember what I said earlier is that the ideal FPS should be around 200 FPS, 150 to 200. So the GPU side is almost perfect, but the CPU is very, very, very inoptimized. What I'm going to do now is disable these two AI drivers. I'm going to completely disable them. I'm going to go to my profiler, hit the record. Actually, first I'm going to clear it and then hit record. And now I'm going to hit play. What we're going to see now is a very, very stable CPU with the peaks hitting at around 250 FPS. Now, if you're building a game that is only tar that is only targeting uh, mobile devices, this is basically all you need. So it's it's hitting 200 FPS peaks. Obviously, uh, these editor loops will go away once you build the actual project. The GPU side is almost perfect because I'm still using the reflection probes. We actually disable that again and get a reading. And now we have a somewhat stable GPU usage, which obviously can be set to even even lower by decreasing settings and whatnot. Okay, now we have a somewhat stable 200 FPS. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna disable the calculate distance of waypoint completely, and I'm just gonna play the game as a player. So I'm gonna hit save and then go back to my game. I'm gonna head to the profiler. And now what we have is a even more stable a CPU usage. Okay, one last thing that I want to show is uh, is the occlusion calling. So obviously for the occlusion calling to work, what you need is for the environment to be marked as static. So change the children as well, and then just hit bake. Okay, now the occlusion calling has finished its work, and now we're gonna test it. What it should do, is obviously decreases GPU usage and it does it decreases it very very significantly what we have in this case is the occlusion calling actually decreasing the usage of the GPU the CPU is obviously in the same uh, usage and that's all perfect what I'm gonna show you now is the occlusion calling actually slowing down the GPU usage so Okay, this is the other project that we're currently working on in the, my YouTube channel. And for right now, I'm not using any occlusion calling into this project. What I have in this project is almost every object is split to single objects. What I'm going to do now is select the environment, hit the static. I'm going to change the children as well. And I'm going to hit bake. Okay, this is what we end up with. Now what I'm going to do is hit play. Okay, so what we have in here is the GPU side of things uh, hitting 200 FPS as standard. And now what I'm going to do is clear the, the occlusion calling that I just made and I'm going to hit play. Okay, so now what you can see is a much more stable GPU usage and it's hitting basically almost the same uh, frame rate, but the spikes are much, much, much stabler. So what, what we learned is occlusion calling does not work perfectly fine every time. So what you have to do is obviously test your game every single step of your way. Now for the last thing, what I'm going to show you. Now for the last thing, what I'm going to show you is a very common mistake that people do in YouTube tutorials. So this is a code that is somewhat optimized. Now in some YouTube videos, what you're going to see is people declare variables into the fixed update. Now what they do, or maybe you do that as well, 
what happens in here is that you're going to declare a variable, maybe a integer variable called temporary variable, and you're going to give it a value, maybe a value of three. So when you do this, when you declare a variable inside the update or fixed update, what you're doing is essentially reserving space into the RAM memory. Now a integer, if we look into Stack Overflow, a single integer takes in 28 bytes of memory. Now what you're doing in here into the fixed update is reserving 28 bytes every single frame. Now, if we take in a calculator and do a little bit of math, so 28 bytes times 60 frames a second will take in 1680 uh, bytes or one kilobyte. Now, if you play the game for more than uh, one second, maybe you play it for a minute times 60, this will uh, reserve 100,000 bytes of your RAM memory or 100 kilobytes. Now, if you play this this game for maybe an hour, what is going to happen is your computer is basically going to blow up. So what you have to do is never declare a variable inside your fixed update. Always declare your variables outside the update function. OK, so this is just a short tutorial to sum up some of your questions that you had in my other YouTube video. I hope you found this video somewhat entertaining to watch and I'll see you guys in another video tutorial, hopefully.